life and death are in the power of my tongue. You think that we would come to the conclusion that it's pretty important what I say? Would, would, we, would it dawn on us that what I say might contain death and what I say might contain life? And if we could just get the next verse with it, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What's that telling you? Your words are powerful. You could speak words of death. You could speak words of life. Which one are you going to speak? You're speaking one or the other. Which one are you going to choose? Which one is it? Now, I've said this before, and I don't know if people care about it or want it or, or what. People many times talk themselves to death. Now I'm not talking about with, with abundance of words. The words they chose talked them to death. Well I went to the doctor and this is what he said. And you start talking. Death. Death is coming. Death is coming. Death is coming. And if you keep talking, death is coming. People don't want to hear that stuff. They also want to pat on the back. Good job. Well, sometimes it ain't a good job. Amen. You're, anybody ever worked at a job, been fired? Guess what? Wasn't a good job, was it? Say, hey, hey, pat you on the back say, hey, you're fired. Well, that wasn't what I wanted to hear, I know, but it's what's necessary. It, it ain't always a pat on the back that we need. We need some good old Holy Ghost, Word of God, of correction, instruction in righteousness, amen. Just, like, just what the Holy Spirit sees need fit in the church sees fit to be said and preached and talked about to try to help the body in these areas that they're lacking in. And that's all of us. Glory to God. Some people say, but I want to feel the Spirit. Okay, I'm going to look at that for a second. I love that stuff. I do. And I ain't, there is no doubt in my mind that the Spirit of God can get on you. Not just in you, but on you. There, there is no doubt about it. I am satisfied about it. But I want to ask you something. When Jesus, the Bible said He's full of the Spirit. Full. When you're full, are you half full? Half empty? Are you three quarters full? When you're full, you can't put no more in there. <laughs> All right. And when he went up a teaching, you think the Spirit was there? Look out now for what I'm getting ready to say. You think he is there? Hmm? Amen. Amen. Well, what happened to some of them Pharisees? What happened to some of them Sadducees? What happened to some of them, them Jews that didn't want to hear the truth? Was the Spirit of God here? Why wasn't they feeling it? Because they didn't want it. Was He there? If Jesus come in our church today, you might be surprised what he'd say. Would you be one to say, man, I know it's the Lord, but oh my goodness, he's a long-winded preacher. Would you say that? Would you say, I've heard that before. Well, you might be surprised though, Herb, how many people would. You might be surprised how many people would excuse themselves while Jesus is still talking. 
I got to go home. I got stuff to do. And they'd leave the Lord right in the pulpit talking. Now I would not. Yeah, you would too. <laughs> yes, you would. Yes, you would. And if the Lord stood up and said, Hey, Peter wasn't talking about your jewelry you're wearing. Would you get mad at him? Amen. Would you get mad at him? Would you get mad at the Lord in spite of your ignorant self and walk out on him? But you'd be surprised how many people would. Well, I'll tell you what. It'd be a while before you come back. Well, I got you. You know why I say that? You know why I say it? He that receiveth you receiveth me. He that receiveth me receiveth the Father that sent me. And if you don't receive the real men of God, you wouldn't receive Jesus no more than you would that man. And some of you are kidding yourself. 